How about those women, though, Marilyn, who are angry about the feminist movement? Because they say, you know, all of these women that get on camera or write books and tell me that, gee, there's more out there for me. I I've been raising a family, and I've been happy. Now, you touched on this in the beginning, but uh, they maybe feel like someone's saying to them, you've thrown your life away. Yeah, I, I think that's because there is a part of feminism that seems to be saying, get into the political structure, make money, live like a man, and these women resent it. And I'm with them. I wonder if that the woman who is just beginning to become aware of the feminist movement isn't afraid of angry women that speak out because she doesn't quite know how to address the issues. I don't think that's the reason she's afraid. She's afraid of anger. And she's afraid of anger because she doesn't want to think about her own anger because she knows if she thought about it, it would ruin her life. In other words, it would ruin her marriage. I want to, we have to deal with the welfare mother and her children and how do you get her into the workforce and how does she deal with those pressures? And I mean, and, and the first thing that any woman has to understand is if you want equal pay for equal work, you want, uh, you, you want all of the, the, what the first thing you get is in line behind every man that has been standing there, every working guy that's been standing there wanting those exact same things over the last 20 years. Betty. She, she, I don't know where she's been living because the economic bottom line is exactly what the women's movement is about. And the economic bottom line, that is that women in America in the great majority today are working because they have to. Yes. The reason we need the Equal Rights Amendment is because even, even the laws on equal pay for equal work don't do the trick, and the laws against sex discrimination won't hold if, if we don't if we don't get. All right, how about her men. comment about the fact that we're so elitist we've forgotten the welfare mother? Oh, what do you say about? Oh, she is full of it. She is full of it. it. There are a lot more women that are going to be on welfare if we don't move it move to the real issues that that we're about. I'm not interested in discussing her kind of thing because her kind of thing is, is, is she just. She, she's talking like an elitist. I am concerned with the conditions of real women in America. I don't know who she is. She's an actress, I guess. But that means, the, no, I don't say that actresses aren't real women. But, <laughs> no, no. but, but the, the jobs that most women well, have I, I want... and the problems that most women have. Look, this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the, the women uh, that, been, uh, were, uh, you know, that either have been told they can have it all and are discovering that they, you have to be super women to have it all. Mm. And they are we're not working out of whim, they're working from an e economic necessity. All right, I'm for the right of women to choose, but, but when, can women choose to have kids when the paycheck is needed for the support of the couple and there isn't a paid maternity and, and uh, leave and, and paid paternity leave and there isn't a guarantee she can keep her job and there isn't adequate child care? You see, this no, is the kind can't. of real issue that I'm talking about. Women of 35 who can't have an agonizing conflict because they can't have kids. All right, Betty. Huh. <laughs>